Hello everyone, get ready for some trending new info in your quest for knowledge. What flaw do you accept about your significant other that would be a deal breaker for many? When she gets stressed she screams. It is horrible. I learned how her mother treated her and understand it a lot more. She already been to therapy once she realized how much it troubles me. That says a lot about her character. She saw a problem and is working on it. Now when she gets stressed and raises her voice, she knows I will just leave the house. I mean no disrespect, just leaving until she calms down. At first, I read when she gets dressed and I was very confused. I did the exact same thing. My wife is ill. Debilitatingly so, and she has been for years. It's not really a flaw, and it's certainly not her fault by any means, but I can see it being a deal breaker for many. We've been married for almost a decade, she was my so for a while before that, and we were friends growing up. I've known her forever. She's always had health problems, but that didn't stop her from an active lifestyle. She still had a deep love for sports, and despite constant health concerns, she competed at a very high level. A few incidents after that left her unable to do so anymore, and so we settled down. It wasn't until after we had kids that the nature of her condition became truly apparent. No doctor has been able to give us a name, but the symptoms are awful. She spends many days in bed, sometimes without the strength to even get to the bathroom on her own. We've had organ failures and emergency surgeries. Her fibromyalgia is ever-present, and we go back and forth between her needing massages just to get a little relief, and not being able to be touched because it hurts so bad. It breaks my heart to try to offer a comforting touch and have her flinch away in pain. Our kids don't know what it's like to play with mommy very much, because she just doesn't have the strength. When I am working, I have to leave her at home and hope the kids listen and are kind to mommy. They don't understand yet, though, so I often come home to a wife who is crying and overwhelmed with kids who are able to get away with anything on her bad days. When I'm not working, I often bring her meals in bed. I'm rewarded with a small, strained, but beautiful smile when I do. The house is often a mess. I'm the sole income for our family, and I have to either help with all the chores, or do them all myself. Our adorable kids are rambunctious little goblins, which wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't just me, but oftentimes it is. Between the housework, the income work, the healthcare work, and the childcare work, I try to fit a little time in for myself whenever I can. I often get some gaming in when everyone else is in bed, my wife is sleeping, and I can finally breathe at the end of the day. I know it's all going to start again tomorrow. We both have our moments of depression. She feels overwhelmed because the tunnel we're in may never end, and me. I'm in the exact same tunnel. I don't see an end either. Intimacy has been a huge struggle as well. She's the most beautiful girl I've Eve known, and I've never been half as attracted to anyone else. It's been that way since we were teenagers, we used to go at it all the time. It's hard to make romantic approaches now when I don't know if they'll hurt her or not. There's a lot of frustration involved, I don't want anyone else, and I don't want to do it myself. I want her so badly, and she's right there next to me. But she's finally sleeping after hurting all day. I can't do that to her. She tries so hard when she can, but I can see it when she's hurting and trying to hide it from me. Those moments when we do, though, when she tiredly tries to make sure that I'm satisfied, make her the sweetest girl on the planet. She tries whenever she can, often when she shouldn't. It isn't always enough for either of us, but it's what we have. When she does feel well, it's like we're newlyweds all over again. Those precious days of sunlit smiles and moonlit passions, the days when cuddling doesn't hurt and we can't get close enough. When I'm having a pillow fight with the kids and she can jump in for just a little while, only to have me tackle her and tickle her senseless with kids climbing all over us. Late nights playing video games after the kids have gone to sleep, or watching silly movies over a hastily thrown together dinner. I wish those days would stay when they're here, and I miss them dearly when they're gone. I'd do it again, though. No matter how many times I carry her around the house, no matter how I lose my patience with a messy home and no rest. I'm so tired, but I'd do it again. She deserves better than this, and I'm going to make sure she gets as good as I can give her. We don't have much money and medical bills aren't cheap, especially when you don't know what is wrong and have to keep going to doctor after doctor. Life is hard, but I'd do it again. I love this girl, and she's going to be happy. I'm going to make sure of it every day that I can. His intense secrecy. He doesn't even keep things secret on purpose, 
he just doesn't mention things as a default and the result is very, very weird. His whole family is like this, freakishly unwilling to talk about themselves. He is so secretive that I found out after seven years together that he has two brothers, not one. Nothing scandalous or anything at all, they talk on the phone once every few months. Comma and when I emailed his brother he wrote back right away to say hi, seems like a nice normal dude. But I guess since he lives in New Zealand he doesn't come to family gatherings so I haven't met him. This is par for the course. I found out about a grad degree when we ran into one of his profs at a burrito place. When I asked why he never mentioned his brother, he just said that he would have if I asked. I don't know that how many brothers do you have is a question you should have to ask. But apparently, they don't fully close the tops on jars. How do you tolerate this madness? Stop lifting them by the lid. Don't put the lid on. With my man, he needs time to think about serious subjects or even minor decisions sometimes, so you can't expect him to give an answer right away. It can be really frustrating, especially when you kind of need an answer right away. I've come to think of it as him being very invested in even the little things in our lives because he cares so much. Because this is how his brain works, I try to give him lead time or if a decision needs to be made right away, I offer to be the one to make the call, which takes it off his plate altogether. He accommodates my anxieties and quirks, so it's definitely not a one-way street. Both of us prefer to spend all of our time together. It's not a codependent slash dysfunctional thing because neither of us gets upset or stressed out if we can't, but we're happiest in each other's company and, given a choice, we'd always choose to be together. The whole pandemic situation hasn't been a problem for us because it's actually allowed us to be together more as is our preference. However, I understand this doesn't work for most people, but it's always worked for us. He talks a lot. He rambles about everything possible, from the origin of salty licorice to why there are so many irregular verbs in French to his old work experiences to the most minute historical or mythological facts. Sometimes he'll laugh when I'm working, I'll go hmm? And he'll talk for five minutes straight about some obscure fact he just learned. I love his enthusiasm. I genuinely like his little rants as signs of his boundless intellectual curiosity I always learn something, and we'll never run out of things to talk about. And besides, I talk a lot too, so we're well matched. She doesn't cook. Doesn't bother me since I love cooking and worked in catering for many years. But might be a deal breaker for some. My boyfriend doesn't cook and four days ago was the first time I ever saw him ingest produce in a year and a half. Poor nutrition is a person's prerogative but I wish I could cook more things for both of us. I don't know if mental illness is a flaw, per se, but I assume that intense chronic depression would generally be a deal breaker for most. He's truly a lovely person, and when he's happy, it's like the sun comes out. One of my goals is to eventually get him to understand what I see in him. We both know that I'm not his therapist, DW that's not what's going on, everything's been poopy these past few months for a variety of reasons but I keep holding out hope that it'll get better. Even in the time I've known him, he's made some pretty significant improvements. I don't know you, but if a compliment from a stranger means anything here it comes, what you are doing sounds amazing and you should be proud of yourself. Keep it up. Honestly I think my boyfriend is pretty accepting about my god awful snoring. I've never thought to record it but the impressions he does are not flattering. Have you gotten yourself checked for sleep apnea? If not, please do. She's not very good at sex. I love her and marriage isn't all about sex. She had an eating disorder, bulimia, most of her life and just kinda freezes up when we are intimate. We have three gorgeous and healthy kids after losing four and wondering if we would ever have any. We have a good life. Just not good sex. That's a tough one mate. Sex is about the most vulnerable a person is, and somebody with body issues as significant as hers are a bad combo. Best you can do is reinforce how sexually attractive she is. Over and over and over and over. Drill it into her head how hot she is. Sex is 80% confidence. So if you just attack her confidence with love then it'll help. Borderline personality disorder. It's sometimes very problematic, but we've gotten better. And if she's willing to tolerate my bullcrap it's really the least I can do. I partially posted the question, because my GF and I came to the conclusion yesterday that I probably have bipolar disorder. I have anxiety problems diagnosed already, but that's more sympathetic than being a bipolar tramp. It really hurts to see and hear people online saying to just dump someone, because they're toxic or something, when the person likely has a mental illness. 
I don't think it's anyone's obligation to stay with a mentally ill person or find help for them, but the amount of time people say break up with them rather than suggest that they go to a therapist is disheartening. It just shows how stigmatized mental illness is. I think people should get the choice of whether or not they are prepared to deal with their significant other having a mental illness, and they can leave if they can't handle it, but I think the blanket assumption that a mentally ill person who is still working out their mental health just can't be in a relationship is incorrect and hurtful. What would have been your answer or question? Leave it in the comments below. Slap that like and subscribe button for more, and check out the link in the video description for even more answers. Peace out, and catch you in the next video.